Let's guys, this is the first ever podcast that I've ever done. We don't have a name for this podcast yet. I don't even know what I'm going to name it. So if anybody has any suggestions, like by the end of the podcast, let me know. Um, but we're going <laughs> to get right into it. I got Joe here. Joe, who <laughs> are you? What's going on, guys? Uh, my name is Joe, a.k.a. Scumbag Silver, a.k.a. Silver Sweet. Uh, I am a commentator for Pokemon Tournament, and I also play Tekken, you know, hanging around the scene. <laughs> all right, so that's all. You're just about video games. That's what that's what you do. Pretty much, man. I mean, this video games has been my life since I was like, what, like five? So, ah, I, you know, I just recently got into competitive gaming in the last year, but I just love video games in general, you know, music and stuff, simple things. Yeah, yeah. I, I was just thinking about that. I actually don't know you personally. All I know you from is, like, video games. And I don't even, th- this is what's funny, I don't remember how I met you. Like, do you know how um, you met me? I think I met you because somebody somebody posted your stream. I can't remember who it was, but, like, somebody posted your stream one time, and I came into, like, the first stream. I don't remember what you were playing or anything, but I started watching you stream, and I just found you entertaining, so I followed, and... After that, I mean, the rest is history. I just started coming back on the regular and supporting you and stuff. And So how do we find out that we were, like, sort of nearby? Cause we're, how do we? Yeah, we're, um, like, an hour and a half or an hour away from each other. Like, how, how, did you, how do we figure out that we were even close by? Because, like, if you just uh, randomly saw me on a stream, how did we go? Right. Um, I think it came into discussion... Um, talking about tournaments more than likely because it probably came to be as far as like because you know you play a lot of fighting games so i think you may have been talking about a tournament one time and i was like oh wait you go to that tournament i go to that tournament it may have been like Gwinnett brawl or something you know what i'm saying like oh you go to that tournament wait a minute that's like it was probably it was probably both for it then because yeah you weren't competitive back then like because i know you for True. a few years now and i was going to like tournaments in one or robins and stuff and so right when was because the first now the first if i know the first event that i met you at like in person was um i think it was a prime time tournament i think you had came down to a prime time tournament and that was the first time i met you but we had like known each other way before then though right i think like, yeah, that's, no, that's no, what no. I'm saying. We, it's all blurry. I don't remember. Wait, let me hold on. Now nah, I'm gonna let me look at the year we became Facebook friends. Hold Cause, on. Because prime, prime time still exists, right? That's the place that's alive. Unfortunately, right now, right? yes. Unfortunately, okay. yes. and like, yeah, I knew you way before <laughs> that place because the first time I went to that place was like recent. That was like twenty. So twenty sixteen, I think. We've been Facebook friends since February of twenty thirteen. Yeah, see, like I know it's been way, long. it's been a, it's been a while. So yeah, yeah, I don't know, man. It's, yeah, see, uh, there it's, we go. Our history is we don't have an origin story. <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of hard to say, man. Yeah, cause yeah, cause back, cause but yeah, cause I was watching your stream back when uh back when your Twitch name was B Murphy eighty eight. Like, yeah, I, I got that on the screen about the right hood. now. I'm, I'm sure that is that's my YouTube channel is still B Murphy eighty eight, and I got that advertised <laughs> on the screen right now. So yeah, if you were around when it was Twitch TV slash B Murphy eighty eight, you're an you're an original bad boy. That's yeah, that's, that's OG. Good. That's when we was hood food stamps, everything <laughs> like that was the best. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right, so what you been up to, man? What's been going on with you? Um, lately, pretty much, um, I've been, um, trying to, trying to focus on tech and, uh, as far as like gaming goes, I was just in a tournament, uh, here in Macon yesterday. I came in fifth in that. So not where I wanted to be obviously, but you know, I did okay. I beat a couple of people, learned a couple of things. So Tekken and, um, Tekken and Splatoon really have, and most of my focus, I really want to, I just moved into a new spot 
but I really need to get my PS4 set up because I actually want to try out that Gundam versus beta that's out this weekend. So wait, let's go, let's go back. Let's talk about that for a second. You being competitive mm-hmm. or whatever, because mm-hmm. you you got to kind of. I think it's an interesting story because <laughs> I feel like I've been trying to get you into competitive fighting games since I met you. At least that's how it feels. I don't remember the origin story, but I'm pretty sure that probably has something to do with it. Me telling you, hey man, you got to play these fighting games and go to these. <laughs> Well, so, you so know, like man. how, and I remember you like rejecting and rejecting that over and over. <laughs> so, how did this come about? How did you start becoming a fighting game player and going to tournaments and stuff? Well, you you're right. Um, you did maybe within the last, I want to say, two years or so. You have been trying to get me into competitive gaming. Um, basically, it, like for the longest time, I guess. It was mostly like a thing of inadequacy because I just felt like, hey, I'm not going to be good at this stuff. I don't feel like playing this stuff because like there's no point. Because like the first my first attempt at trying to be a competitive gamer was actually Smash Brothers. I tried to play Smash 4. That's when I came out to the tournament that you guys had in Albany and play second or whatever and i'm thinking oh okay this might not go that bad and then i went back and started playing in the regular tournaments in my city and just got last place like every time (laughs) so i was just like okay so competitive smash is not for me and i was kind of dormant for a while and then poking tournament got announced Mm -hmm. um last year and so when Pokemon Tournament got announced, uh, I was like, yo, this looks like it'll be pretty dope. And I was kind of wishy-washy back and forth over the timeline of like waiting for the actual uh, American release because it was in arcades first, of course. Um, and so when it came out, I didn't buy it the first day, but a friend of mine brought it over and like I played it a little bit, felt it out a little bit, and it was dope. I liked it. Um so then I heard like a friend of mine from the uh, Morrow area. Um, he there was like a UDLR tournament. They were gonna have the first Pokemon tournament pretty much in Georgia. So I was like, huh, I'll go out to this, see how I do. If I do well, I'll continue. If I do shitty, then I know, hey, this isn't for me either. So I went out and I placed third. Wow. And people were impressed they were like dude your sweet coon is like so solid man you you got this down you got to teach us the matchup and stuff and realistically i probably would would have had second if it wasn't for the bullshit that happened in the final match (laughs) so uh i was like okay you know i know what i did wrong i see what i have to learn let me go back to the next one went back to the next one place third again i was like okay i'm kind of salty because i didn't go up but i'm also not mad that i didn't go down I, I, so oh go ahead. Uh, go, ahead. go ahead oh so from there i just kind of took those two third places and ran with it and i was like okay so i'm gonna play poking now i'm gonna focus on poking stream poking upload poking content and stuff and it just kind of gained traction from there Okay, so what I was about to say is I think you kind of hit the fighting game tournament lottery. Like, because that's not most people's experiences. Oh, I'm going to enter this tournament. Oh, I got third in this tournament. Let me continue on. I think like most people's experience is I'm going to go to this tournament. I'm going to win it. And then, oh, crap, I went 2-0 and and I don't know what I'm doing. Let me try to get better. Like that's I, that's what I think most people's experience is or whatever, and like, but you like from the get go, it's like, oh, I think I might be pretty good at this. Let me keep going and try to see what I can do or whatever. Like, I wish I had that experience or whatever, but for me, it's been like a constant climb. Um, right. so so now I would say that now that you're playing Tekken. And switching over, like how how's that going? Like going from a game that you kind of felt like you were good at from the beginning to like playing this whole jumping into this whole new world, especially right jumping into something that's a lot more established. Um, yeah. my thing is like I've been playing Tekken since I was like young. Like when I was five, I had a PlayStation One, and me and my grandpa used to play Tekken Two all the time. 
Yo, like, you I love it. with your grandpa? Yes, dude. My grandpa, grandpa is an OG. Joe sounds like the coolest guy. <laughs> Yo, he he he's a jerk sometimes, but he's an OG. Like this man used to sit like at night. Uh, for like an hour or two and play Tekken and Bushido Blade with me and stuff, man. It was what? he like, was. I I can't picture my like my grandma, my grandpa. <laughs> I don't know him, but my grandma. Like I can't picture her being <laughs> like, hey, like, but this is how my grandma talks. She's like, hey, come on, sit down and play some Tekken with me. Like that would yeah, never no, he, happen. I, I, I mean, he would do it, obviously, to indulge me, but he enjoyed it. And, I mean, even to this day, I mean, sometimes he still brings, you know, some stuff up. Like, one day he he asked me, he's like, hey, you, you played any of them, uh, any of that Tekken lately? I was like, <laughs> oh, yeah, man, I got, like, the latest one. I'll have to bring it over here one day and show you what's up. Like, <laughs> he's like, yeah, you you'll probably tear me up now. I'm like, yeah, I mean, I'm a little older. so. <laughs> but yeah, we have conversations about it occasionally. But yeah, we, I've been, Tekken 2 is a great memory for me. That's why I have it downloaded on an emulator. Um, and that was my first Tekken, and I loved it to death. And as like time went on, like over the years, I discovered some of the other Tekkens. I wasn't really heavy into um, 4 or 5. I loved three. Uh, a friend of mine actually gave me a physical copy of one, which was really cool. And then I kind of skipped over to six. I had six on the PSP, um, which I mean nobody plays fighting games on the PSP except for me. But <laughs> so I had six on the PSP, and I played tag two um, here and there uh, with some friends occasionally, and I was pretty bad at it, but. Tekken 7 is definitely the most accessible Tekken in the history of Tekken. It's so easy to get into, and that's like a staple for like fighting games lately in general. But Tekken 7 is so easy to get into, and it has stuff. It it kind of like punishes you if you try. I guess it punishes you in a way if you try to be too intricate. Because, like, for example, I had a dude at the tournament yesterday who was pissed that he lost to me. He's like, you play so simple, and I know I'm better than you, but I lost. And I'm like, that's where you went wrong. You had this conceited idea of I'm better than this guy so I can beat him. But you, what you don't realize is the sim- simplicity, unless you're talking about top-level play, simplicity wins in Tekken 7. It really does because me playing Miguel, I don't have to do a lot of work to do a lot of damage. He has a lot of easily readable stuff, but I don't have to put in that much work. And if I feel like you're mashing buttons, I could just throw out a rage art. So it's like, it makes it so simple to get into. And that's why I like it because I'm not all for learning frame data and billions of combos and learning every character like i'm i'm more for just kind of jumping in and playing and enjoying yourself feeling like you can do something and that's what tekken 7 makes me feel like so i mean so far i've been to four tournaments went to two Gwinnett brawls um um monthly in fayetteville and then the Macon tournament the first Gwinnett Brawl I went to, I went 2-2. Second Gwinnett Brawl, I went 0-2. The Fayetteville one, I got second. And the Macon one, I got fifth. So, not incredible, but definitely not the worst of the bunch. Wait, I got to stop you right there. Who the hell's balling out in, in Macon to make you get fifth place? Like, Macon got players now? What's going on? Well, Okay, so here's the thing with Macon. We all know Macon sucks. Um, We all know that there's like maybe there's like a few people out of Macon that are pretty solid at at fighting games. Um, Most of them being Smash players. Because like there are actually some pretty solid Smash players. But as far as Tekken goes, um. The guy, the two, the two guys that I lost to in the making tournament. The the first one, he was solid. 
he was he played Brian. I hate Brian, but he he played Brian, and he got me. He read me, and he played a very solid game, and I respect him for that. Um, but the Lee player, he basically just cheesed me out with a bunch of like lows Jeez. and free. <laughs> he, he cheesed me out with a bunch of lows and free stuff that I could have blocked. So I was disappointed in myself because I knew what he was doing, but I didn't really know how to deal with it because I don't have experience with that character. So, and because now, because the thing was immediately after he beat me, he lost. He got out right after he beat me. So my thing is I just have stuff to learn to be able to beat people but i'm not gonna you know shit on everybody there are there are some decent players like uh my buddy that i was telling you about before uh sharif the eliza player Mm -hmm. he went to Grenette brawl last time um when we went like 40 something people and this man came in fifth like out of like that's more impressive he had we they had double the people that this tournament and he came in fifth so he I mean, his Eliza play is ridiculous. He does low. He carries you to the corner with one combo. He has great mix-ups. I mean, I hate him because he plays that disgusting Eliza, but <laughs> he, he, he's a solid player, and he's still working at it, and he plans to go back to the next win at Brawl. So I think it's just a thing of, like, because of my simplistic play, I just need to take the time to learn to adapt because, for me, it's more about, punishing people rather than them them being worried about my moves i just need to learn how to punish people's stuff because i'm i'm pretty solid at with punishing so if i can get a get get a good punish in i can usually do the damage that i need to to take a match people are usually surprised when i win games anyways okay so now, out of all of that, the one thing that stuck in me is, look at this. I did all this work with this guy, and he's still using, like, super casual turns like cheese. Damn. All that work <laughs> gone to waste. So, so anyway. Hey, well, I'm... <laughs> oh, <laughs> look. Tell me, tell me about how, how you feel about the game right now. Like, uh, do you think the game's great? Do you think it needs work? Do you think it's... <clears throat> Um, like, where do how how do you feel overall about the game and it being playable in the in the foreseeable future? I think Tevin, Tekken Seven definitely uh, does need some work for sure. Um, I don't like a lot of the roster. <clears throat> uh, I don't like a lot. Damn near everybody's there. <laughs> I mean, only a few it's not, there. I'm not talking about like character wise. I'm saying like in terms of like play wise, I feel like oh, okay. there are character. Yeah. I feel like there are characters who have to do a lot less work to do anything. And it's really disappointing to see, like take uh Katarina, for example, she's a new character or whatever. She's trash because I've seen people literally dominate matches by mashing X. And it's like, even if you like her kicks are so fast that even if you like punish some of the things that she's doing, she just gets, she'll get so much free damage off of just mashing X. And it's just like, hold on. Why? Like, why does this, why is this a thing? And that's what I don't, I don't, I don't respect a lot of characters because the the way that the ways that they get damaged it just it's not it's not cool with me because it's just like it they're just getting like free damage and it's like some people would be like oh well if they're you know if they're a trash character if they're a trash player you know you lost to them what does that make you it makes me somebody who needs to learn how to deal with trash like Oh, okay. So, yeah, I want to I want to stop you right there and ask and ask you that. Have you thought about that aspect of saying, "Man, she can just do this or whatever," and that's dumb? Have you ever thought that maybe I'm not looking at this the, the right way? Because I I can tell you, I did that for years. <laughs> I did that for years, and I was like, "Man, this is so stupid. Why does this exist or whatever?" And thinking that I was justified in my thinking when really the light bulb hadn't popped in my head yet and i really didn't like see the big picture and know 
everything that I was looking at when I was playing. Like, I didn't see the real game for what it was until, like, years later. And even now that I see the real game, I realize I'm still not that good at playing the real game, even though I know what it is now. Like, have you thought about that? Like, maybe what you think is trash might not be trash because you don't know what real trash looks like. Do you see what I'm getting at? Like... I mean, yeah, I get what you're saying, but I'm not no, saying I, that's not the case. I'm not saying that is the case with you, but I'm asking you, have you thought about it? Because well, I know that was my, the case with me. Yeah, well, here's my thing. I just, all I know is that I need to learn how to deal with it. Because regardless of my opinion on it, it's not going to change. Mm-hmm. They're not going to change the gameplay so drastically that characters get removed or moves get removed or something like that unless they're like legit busted so it's more of a thing of at the time of like dealing with it i'm salty i'll admit however i know there are ways to deal with it i just haven't learned those ways so that's my thing that's why i don't like because when the dude like i said when the dude told me that oh um you know i'm a better player than you you know i'm like that's cool but you're still going to lose the jank stuff every time if you don't learn how to deal with it. Cause it doesn't matter if you're, I mean, unless you're somebody up at like the top, top, like, you know, speed kicks or poke chop or Anakin or, you know, Saint thing, people like that, you know what I'm saying? Your, your knowledge can get very invalidated by, simple stuff because even because you know some people like the people that i play regularly you know what i'm saying they they recognize oh he has you know a bit of a pattern and they can punish it sometimes but what they're not thinking about is okay he has a pattern but he's probably using that pattern to condition me which is usually what i'm doing I'll repeat a lot of the same moves to get them prepared for dealing with that same move. And then once they've gotten to the point where they deal with that same move, I do something different and it allows me to take them out for the time being. And that's what I focus on. I'm not like, I don't need to always, I don't need to always beat you. I just need to beat you when it's important. It, to to quote the youngsters these days, there's levels to this shit. You so, right. So let me you ask right. you this: Have you <laughs> ran into like what do you what do you do when you run into the person that when you say you got patterns or whatever? What do you do yeah. when you run into the person that instantly recognizes your shit? Like before you even get a chance to condition them, they're already like, "Yo, I'm gonna." You say, "Hey, I'm gonna throw out this." this standing for it at the beginning of the round and you like you're thinking yo i'm gonna do this 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 and then the moment you throw out standing for at the beginning of the round they're like sidestepping it and then full punish you for it like do you go whoa i might be toast here like how do i want to know how your brain thinks when you come in when you hit the brick wall what happens um or when the brick wall hits you it depends on depends on how hard it hits. I mean, it depends on if I ran into it, uh, like just tapped it, or if I ran into it full force and like got knocked out. <laughs> so, um, the okay, I'll use playing speed kicks as an example. So he had a little online tournament or whatever, and I played against him. And now he has like he has a hell of a good Miguel, even though how wrong is his main, he has a hell of a good Miguel. So I already went into it, you know, expecting him like, hey, he's gonna probably shit on me. Uh, so when I did my when I did my opening, my, you know, I a lot of times, like you said, I open with like the standing four or whatever. Um, so when I did my opening, I mean, he blocked it, and then he just started going into stuff like he because you know how when somebody's above a certain level in in a game they kind of like don't really take every match seriously like they'll start off with some dumb stuff Mm -hmm. you know what i mean yeah i do it all the time so what happened was he started doing dumb stuff and so i punished it 
and he just kind of kept hitting buttons, and then I rage art and I rage arted in one round. So, using that as an example, it's like when I see my like I said, I gauge how hard I've hit the wall, and then once I've gauged how hard I hit the wall, I kind of take that and realize what I need to do. So if I'm so for example, if I just tap the wall, I will kind of okay, I messed up on the first move. Let me do a couple of different things. Mm. Let me just stick to my normal game plan and do some different things. But if I run full force into the wall, I'm like, okay, wait a minute. Let me be defensive. Let me back up and let me see what kind of moves he's throwing out and see if I can punish any of them. So I kind of try to be an adaptive player and play to the tune of my opponent rather than letting them play me. Like, I already think, like, just based off of that, I think you got the right mindset, considering you're only, what, like, two months into competitive fighting games or whatever or something? <laughs> well, well, two well, months actually, into Tekken. Yeah, into Tekken, but... yeah, because you started with Pokken. But, yeah. yeah, either way, like, <laughs> this, this was my mindset for years. Like, let's say I run smack dab into the wall. I hit the wall, I wake up, and I go, man... I'm toast. I'm dead. I just ran into a brick wall. <laughs> since I'm toast and since I'm dead, let me just do the dumbest, craziest thing. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to try to like Jesse Owens pole vault over the wall and like, you know, knowing damn well I'm like not physically fit, but I'm going to try to like jump over this big ass wall or do some dumb ass shit like karate chop it down or something like i i that's that's what my mindset used to be is like well i'm dead i can't beat this guy let me just do dumb shit <laughs> and of course you know the result of that it never worked ever and so. you know what's funny about that of what's funny about that is that's me when like I'm two rounds down and like the dude is shitting on me in the third round, I'm like, let me throw out this rage art and see if it hits. <laughs> and it's funny because when I throw out the rage art, sometimes that's enough momentum for me to actually take a round. <laughs> so, but but do you win the game though? Like oh, I have, yes. I made I've yeah. made entire comebacks off of one round of the rage art. Yeah. Yeah, because see, that's what I'm saying. Like, I could never make like if I fought somebody, if I played somebody that I thought was just gonna totally demolish me, and they did, I would be done, and I couldn't make the adjustments and stuff. I can now, but like when I first started playing or whatever, man, that mm-hmm. was that was a wrap. All you had to do was show me you was <laughs> you was about business, and I'd be like, all right, you got it, fam, and I wouldn't I care. Feel that. <laughs> I respect that. Yeah, and I, I mean, I, I think that was that was <laughs> foolish. That man, instead of actually like trying to figure out what was going on and stuff, man, just I kind of I kind of do the opposite in real life, though. In real life, like if I get smacked or whatever, I go to analyzing and everything or whatever. Like, hey, how do I get out of this situation? Like, what do I need to do to better myself? But when it comes to playing fighting games. I don't know. I guess because it's a video game and you can take liberties like that, I it was really hard for me to just like make those adjustments. I would just say screw it. <laughs> yeah, man. So like other other than Tekken Seven, you played Pokemon. Now you're playing Tekken Seven. Do you see yourself going into anything else competitively? And don't say Splatoon. I mean, fighting game, really. <laughs> I'm going to ask you about I, Splatoon in a minute. <laughs> um, as of right now, no. Because I don't, I really don't like to spread myself too thin. And, like, focusing on both of those at one time is going to be hard enough. Because I know you know, um, you know, Pokemon Tournament. DX. DX is coming out and I might pick yeah. up a new character and stuff and so um not not for right now. Um no I, interest uh, in Marvel? Marvel's this month. No, Marvel, never like two weeks never, away. Never, wow. never. I I despise Marvel. I like watching Marvel, but I despise playing Marvel on so many levels. I've I win the occasional match in Marvel just because of basic combo loops, but other than that, no. Like 
the Marvel that I enjoyed was Marvel vs. Capcom Clash of Superheroes, the first one on yeah. arcade and PlayStation. Well, this one is like has elements from all the old games too. Like you might want to give it a try. Like I never liked Marvel myself. But on giving this a try, I never liked um anime games, but like I really liked Blaze Blue once. I like really truly gave it a shot. I played Blaze Blue on the Vita for a while. It was fun. So like um, yeah, I'm I'm giving Marvel a go this time. Like a serious I mean, go. I'm not going to buy it. I'll tell you that. That's a guarantee. I'm not going to buy it, but I might play it over some friends' houses or something like that. But as far as getting into it competitively, I just, I prefer not to, just because I'm not a fan of, I'm not a fan of combo heavy games, to be honest. I don't, I don't like stuff that, because that's, I mean, with, t- like, for, with Tekken, for example juggles and stuff it's like i don't like being carried across the screen for 70 percent of my health and off of one move like if you make one mistake like that's almost a wrap but But because tekken well that's what (laughs) tekken allows tekken allows a, a better recovery level for it you know what i'm saying like like i said when i use my rage heart and then i like gain all this momentum back like tekken has a better recovery but with Marvel, I well, I'll admit, I love the hell, I love the hell out of Marvel two. Marvel two was a lot of fun, um, but I played it like casually. I never got into tournaments because it just wasn't for me. But the things that I see in Marvel three, and actually, really, the things that I see in a lot of fighting games, I don't like. I don't like the meta. You know what I'm saying? I don't like. Like, oh, if you don't play this character or you don't find a way to make your character viable, you're screwed. I don't like that at all because I want the freedom to play who I want and still be able to deal with stuff. Like, I don't like, uh, you know, all these matchups and stuff like that. But because my thing is like um, with with Marvel, for example, I mean, you'll see like a bunch of teams with Dr. Doom on it because he has like that foot dive and like these, this, these really good like chain loops and stuff like that. And people will take advantage of it and win entire matches with it. And I like it because see, that's what's appealing, I guess, about Pokemon more is because every character in Pokemon is viable. If you look at like the history of Pokémon and like its top eights and stuff like that, mm-hmm. you'll never see one character winning super consistently. Like, um, I mean, even because like Worlds of Pokémon this year and last year, a Breakson took it, the little Firefox Breakson. But if you look at the tournaments scattered like throughout the year, I mean, you'll see Lucario taking it, you'll see Suicune taking it, you'll see Septa. It doesn't matter. It's just so it's for Pokemon. It's more about the players than the characters, and I respect. I have a lot of respect for Pokemon for that, but okay. most fighting games they don't have that. Like I said, if you if you don't play this specific character, because in Marvel I play my team, my team Marvel three team, Beautiful Joe, Wolverine, and Reed. Out of those three characters. I'd say that two of them are at least, you know, reasonably viable. Beautiful Joe, like I've seen people play Beautiful Joe in tournaments for like shits and giggles, but Beautiful Joe to people, like they laughed at me when I played Beautiful Joe. They're like, what the fuck are you doing? So I, I I can't even speak on that because I don't know I don't I remember seeing Beautiful Joe play in tournament but I don't know much about the the Marvel tournament history. I, yeah, I, I did want to ask you about this or whatever because I, oh sure, and I would I would be doing a disservice to myself if I don't ask <laughs> this. And some of the <laughs> some of the viewers should know what I'm gonna um, mention because I have to bring the game up, especially for somebody, oh, boy. especially for somebody technically new to the fighting game community. Oh boy, Fantasy Strike. <laughs> now. If there's any game that I think you should give a go that's in the 2D realm or whatever, 
and you want to learn like the basics of 2D fighting games, should be Fantasy Strike. I played the beta that like, they had. I played the oh, little weekend did. beta. I did. Oh, did you play online with, with people or did you go on the train them all? Like, what did you do with I it? I played online. I did. How, how do you feel about the game? I can't really give a verdict because the net play was horrible. Oh, well, now that's true because it, it's not that the net play was horrible. It's just, well, it's using GGPO, but they don't have like, it uses up too many resources right now, so it makes the game actually run slow, and that was the problem. But yeah, and once like they get that with, kinked out, it'll be right with all the. There were so many times when like I would have won around or something, but the rollback. There was like a lot of rollbacks. There was a lot of like skipping frames and lag, even with even with like my graphics settings at low because i thought it was my graphics settings at first you yeah. know but it's, it's not nah, so the game itself as far as the core gameplay goes it's interesting it's definitely interesting um and i see like why they have like four rounds and stuff because matches can go so fast um but it's definitely a to be determined from my part just because i don't feel like I got a very good glimpse at the game because of connection issues. Okay. All right. Just wanted to see where you're at. Hey, hey, keep a, keep an eye out on that game. I'm telling you. I'm sure you'll I'm sure you'll be streaming it comes out. So I'll just wait for your stream. <laughs> yeah, as Macho <laughs> Man would say, "Space is the place." <laughs> like, <laughs> check it out. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> um. All right. So I had to get that out the way. That's fair. Splatoon. Um, what the f is a Splatoon? <laughs> Yo, Splatoon is a uh, Splatoon is Nintendo's new IP from last year. Um, it is a shooter based on. Bro, uh, I didn't see no shooting going on, man. I no, it is. It's it is it's a shooter based on uh sea life, I guess you could say. Um, because basically the characters in the game, they're they're they're. So they're like squid children so they can transform from like a standing up uh like human form i guess you could say to uh a small uh squid form and they can swim through ink when they're in the squid form and you know they walk around and shoot and stuff but so just, um, just so you know final round 15 was won with beautiful joe oh so hmm. there you go Okay. All right. Well, maybe he's a little more viable than I thought. All yeah, right. Remember what I said about maybe <laughs> you know what you know isn't everything. You know, there's a whole true, world true. out here. Anyway. Um, so yeah. Now but... let me tell you my perspective of what I saw on the screen. Okay. I saw um what was marketed as a kids game mm -hmm. with these little squids running around or whatever, shooting stuff that looks like. Um, I want to be politically correct here and not be vulgar. Shooting stuff that looks like it has like the makeup of um the stuff that's used to produce children, but but with food coloring in it. And it's and I'm like, what is this? And there's and they're splatting it all over each other, all over the place in that game. That's horrible, man. There's a lot of innuendos with Platoon, definitely. However, um, it's I think what makes Platoon fun is the uniqueness it brings to the shooter genre. The fact that it's not all just like guns that we know, um, you know, regularly in real life. It has guns kind of based off those guns, but they have their own like unique properties. Like you'll have a gun, um, but you also can carry around like a special attack and a and a and a bomb type of weapon. So, like, for example, the weapon that I use, it's called the tri slosher It's a bucket. Like, literally, it's just a green bucket. And it throws ink at, like, a really pretty decent range. You kind of just toss and splash. Um, and my sub-weapon is a burst bomb. A burst bomb is a type of bomb that when you throw it, it just instantly on contact explodes. And then my special is called ink arm. Uh, so ink armor, you put that on and it gives you extra protection, extra damage. 
And so you kind of have to use those, everything that you have in combination to defeat the other team. There's several different game modes. Uh, Turf War, where it's like whoever has the most pain on the stage wins that team. Um, tower control, you fight for control of a tower, try to push it to the enemy base. Mm-hmm. Um, Rainmaker, there's this giant super weapon called the Rainmaker that starts off in the middle of the uh, middle of the arena, and you have to try and take the Rainmaker to your opponent's base um, before like they get it to yours. Uh, and then there's also um, tower control, splat zones which is basically like a capture the flag style mode where there's one area on the map that depending on who has the most ink on it, they have control of it and you have to hold it until your timer runs out. Um, And in Splatoon 2, they've actually made an addition of a new mode called Salmon Run, which if you're, are you remotely familiar with Call of Duty like at all? I haven't played Call of Duty since like Modern Warfare Two, which was okay. Like, was like you know the zombies mode. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. So basically, it's pretty much Call of Duty zombies. Um, and there's these there's these salmon that are basically um invading on on like on like a stage, and they're trying to kill you. And so basically, the object is to kill as many salmon as you can while taking out the the bigger salmon, the boss salmon, salmonoids, and you collect the golden eggs that they drop and deliver them to your employer. At, uh, he, there's a basket sitting in the middle of the arena. You drop the eggs off, and you have to meet a certain quota per wave and stuff. So it's pretty much similar to Call of Duty Zombies, but it has its own unique elements. So I think that's why Splatoon was such a huge success, is because it took the shooter genre like what we know about it and kind of flipped it upside down in a way and people just enjoy the hell out of it. I mean, there's esports tournaments for Splatoon and everything. It's, it's pretty big. Now, now when you say esports tournaments for Splatoon, like I remember when the first one came out, people were saying like you couldn't play like locally or whatever, like, or you couldn't like have full teams locally. Like did they fix that? Cause it's a part two out now, right? Or am right. I wrong? Like, did yeah. they fix that now? Like, can you have like LAN multiplayer, or is it only online still? Uh, um, it's you can do local because um, with see that's the thing about the Switch. The Switch has made things so much more accessible. So with the Switch, you can connect locally to people and have battles. Like you can all just pull out your switches and like connect to all the consoles and play. You can all pull out your switches and connect with each other. Yes. Man, Nintendo is G H E Y. Yo, stop. Yeah. <laughs> Whatever. That's, nah, that's but that, man. You can pull out your switches, connect with each other, and splat all over the place. Man. Nintendo, Look, please. don't like you. You that's, think it was the wrong way? I have way. not owned a Nintendo console in over twenty years, man. They, You're yo, thinking about it the wrong way. Yo, the, don't let me the, get into my conspiracy theories, man. They, yo, please don't. <laughs> the, look, the Switch. The Switch is a great system because of its accessibility. Like legit, the fact that you can pick up your console and just take it wherever you need to go is. It, it's gonna make tournaments like revolutionary because as far as like tournaments go especially well for poking pretty much all tournament organizers have to invest in are televisions and docks the docks are about 80 bucks and competitors can just bring their own switches and you can just when you're when it's your turn to play, you well, sit down at your station, no, no, you dock your switch. There's huh? gonna be a big issue with that. I can tell you What's... what the big issue is where TOs are pro- well, people do that now in grassroots in grassroots tournaments. Everybody brings their own consoles and stuff. But the but like for fighting game majors and stuff, they're still gonna have to provide all the stuff because people, you know, people are gonna have their switch. 
and the uh-huh. games aren't going to be like up to date and characters will be missing and all that stuff or whatever. So there's still that like logistics problem. That sounds hmm. like a fairy tale and like, oh, this is going to be easy. This thing is hella portable and all of that. But then that's there's that nightmare for majors like major major TO organizers are still going to have to like have all the consoles. Or we'll see. Uh, you can't uh, rely got... on the community to like have their stuff set up, right? Yeah, no, we'll see. I mean, a thing I'll say about the Pokemon community is they're definitely they're definitely into their game. They're definitely they definitely support their game. They're definitely focused on their game. Um and so I feel like that's why I feel like it's viable because I feel like they can do that. But like I said, it's something we'll have to see. We don't we're not actually gonna see any um uh, DX tournaments until next month because the game comes out I think on like the 19th and all of the events for it that are scheduled they're scheduled either before that or they're scheduled like in the beginning of October so we won't see any immediately but it'll be interesting to see how tournaments run with DX all right um (laughs) major tournaments I know you go in the final round do you yes. plan on going to any other ones? I got one in, one in particular I suggest because I'm trying to go there no matter what. Even if I got to walk. Like my car, I... If my car breaks <laughs> down, I'm trying to get to CEO in Daytona next year. Like, that's the one. I currently don't, like, as of right now, no, because I don't have money. I just, like, I don't have money to go to any tournaments that aren't you know, within like an hour to an hour and a half of me. Um, Because I I just don't have the money to travel. I would like to go to several tournaments just because I've never been to tournaments before getting into Pokken. Um, So I would like to go to more tournaments, but because I've been invited to come to like, um, I was invited to come to Summer Jam and commentate and I was invited to come to the Fall Classic and commentate uh, but I'm not gonna. I wasn't able to attend Summer Jam, and I will not be able to attend the Fall Classic either. So, ah, oh, that sucks, man. But yeah, like, yeah. like Final Round's been my major, but not anymore. Like I didn't go last year, and I like Final Round or whatever. But I didn't. Go I last didn't enjoy year. Final well, Round. Well, not last year. Well, you know the last one that was this year. I didn't go to it, but yeah, CEO I, I, Daytona, man. Oh, CEO would be nice. I would like to go to CEO. To and um, but now here's one for you a, a community that you're kind of familiar with when I went to Epicon mm-hmm. and I um and the tournament was over I was just randomly like going around and talking to people saw some people I knew and stuff and I was just chatting with them and right, they're like right. into like conventions and all of that and they kept mentioning one thing and it's happening right now Dragon Con it was like Dragon Con Dragon Con I was like hey man what's up Dragon Con. That's what's up. Like I kept hearing that over and over. Oh my god, wow. <laughs> you still like do you still go to like those type of events or whatever, like the anime conventions and stuff? I will be attending thing? AW yes, I will be attending AWA. The reason why I don't like Dragon Con, Dragon Con is <clears throat> the material of it is not focused on what I like. And it's too big. I really don't want to go to Dragon Con ever because of its size. It's just, it's too much for me. And it's just like, it, it's nerve wracking to think about like the, the stories that I've heard and stuff. And I just, nah, Dragon Con is just way too extreme for me. Um, but I will be attending AWA at the end of the month. Um, I'm looking forward to that. Um, I'm actually trying to like watch my funds pretty much to make sure that I can go because I have, like, a room of people, but there's actually a rapper that I've known for, like, I want to say eight years now. Uh, He's not, like, super big to where, like, you would know who he is, but he's big enough to where he's big around his local scene, and he's big enough to have done a video for Funimation. So... I would say he's, like, uh, one of them nerd rappers. (laughs) Like, one of those mm -hmm. type of rappers. Yes, okay. that's that's yeah no nerdcore yeah. Um, Wait, which there's an actual genre called yeah. nerdcore. Mm-hmm, there is. 
blew my mind just then. <laughs> yes, there is a genre called nerdcore. Um, so uh, he didn't start out entirely as that, and that's not, still not even his like super main focus. He's he's kind of like um, one of those people, I guess, who kind of sprinkles that kind of stuff in there, uh, like Lupe Fiasco, for example. Um, so he's kind of like that, but he's going to be at AWA performing and he told me that like after he's done with his show, I can meet him because like I've legit, like I've legit been like a a hundred percent supporter of this man since he started out like spreading the word of his, his mixtapes and stuff like that. And like getting his albums and, and stuff, letting people listen to him. And so he's like, yo, I'm glad you're finally able to come to a show. We can definitely arrange something that we can hang out. So I'm really, really excited for that. All right. Um, we're, we're nearing towards the end, I think. Well, we're not at the end, but we're nearing towards there. And there's one thing that I really want to talk about real quick. And that's why I went into Dragon Con and all that stuff, whatever. Right. Your experiences at these places have been oh. legendary in my mind. <laughs> like, like, you you legit made me, like, interested, afraid, and, like, I don't know, I've had, like, all types of emotions about anime conventions just from listening to you. Do you want to share a story about any of your anime convention experiences? <laughs> any of them. You don't even have to talk um, about all of them, or you can talk about all of them if you want. It doesn't matter to me. Oh, uh, man. You know what? Just get one we, off your chest and let the people know. Yo, man. All right, look. <laughs> okay, so. No, no, you know right. what? Screw this. I'm going to force your hand here. Let's talk about Brian. Yo, no. Oh, my God. Yo. Ah. Let's talk about Brian. Okay. Tell, tell people the story of Brian. Okay, so first and foremost, fuck Brian. Uh, that's the first <laughs> thing I have to say about that. He's a piece of shit, and I hope he dies. Um, that's rough, yeah, man. I mean, the dude still owes me money. Like, and <laughs> so he's he got to die because of that? He, yes. <laughs> it's, been like, it's been like three years, and he, like, the dude is still on my friends list. He sees me post every day, and he's just, he sucks. So this motherfucker, all right. So you're partially to blame for this, just so you I'm, know. I'm partially to blame, bro. Yes, I, because you invited me to the tournament where I met him. So you're partially <laughs> to blame for this, bro. That's like so, on some six degrees of Kevin Bacon yeah. type stuff, man. I exactly. Got, I got exactly. nothing to do with it. Exactly. Wow. So, uh, anyways, so basically, I met the dude at. Uh, the tournament that you invited me to. And he seemed like a pretty decent dude. He was talking about going to MomoCon and needed a room or whatever. And I was like, oh, I got a room. You know, if you want to stay, it'll be this much, yada, yada. He's like, okay, cool. So everything was fine. You know, he met up with us, uh, whatever. And, you know, he stayed in the room. What he failed to tell me, this dingleberry, what he failed to tell me was that he had parked his car with the hotel. And I specifically told everybody before the con, do not park with the hotel. They will charge you. So he parks with the hotel. And this dumbass tells Pete, tells the hotel staff, they're like, what room are you going to be in? Oh, I'll be rooming with Johar and Stewart. And since he tells them that, they look me up, of course, and they find my room, and they stick the bill on me. And so he comes up to the room or whatever, and he says, oh, I'm the hotel just fine. Like, they didn't charge me anything or whatever. I'm like, huh, that's weird. And so my dumbass didn't look into it immediately. I, like, I should have. I should have been like, wait a minute. Let's look into this because I don't want anything stupid going down. So I just let the weekend go by, you know, um, and MomoCon, that, that whole con was kind of weird for me, but when it come, came to the end and they told me to check out or whatever, they're like, your total is $55. I'm like, huh? How do I, huh? How do I have to pay you guys money? What's going on? They're wait, like, wait, did you just say $55? 
Yeah, but it was more than that. Uh, it was, I was, about it was to say, only man, this guy no, got to die over no, fifty five dollars, man. That's no, just it was it was it was it was it was fifty five dollars because that's how much it exceeded the money that I already had got. So it actually was more, but I actually had to come out of my pocket. So they're like, your total is $55 or whatever. I'm like, huh, why do I have to pay you guys? Like you use valet parking. I'm like, no, I didn't. And they're like, yes, you did. Um, yada, yada. It says right here, uh, Brian was staying in your room and, and parked. And I was like, what? I was like, I immediately flipped out. I was like, hold on a minute. So I called the dude and his ass was already halfway back to Albany saying, oh, I'm sorry, man. I didn't know. I don't have the money or whatever. And I'm already gone. I got to get home. I'm like, okay, fuck. So, um, so I pay them or whatever, because I had no choice. They wouldn't let me leave. Otherwise, like they wouldn't, I would be fucked. So I get the bill or whatever. They charged this man a hundred and forty dollars to park there for three nights. A hundred and forty dollars that this man got charged. I was livid. And then of course, you know, when I got back home and stuff, I messaged him and whatever. I'm like, dude, you owe me or whatever. And he tried to say, no, you know, they didn't tell me this. And I'm sorry you got screwed, but yada, yada. And then claimed he was going to, like, he didn't have a job. So he was going to try to get one and pay me back. And to this day, the fuck boy had never paid me back. <laughs> he was talking about he going to pay me back with interest and everything. And so I got pretty much like about like $150 from this motherfucker floating out in space because he was too dumb to check and see if they were going to charge him first or listen to my instructions. Damn, fam. $140 parking. See, stuff like that, man. I ain't trying to go to these conventions, man. I, I saw the price for Dragon Con and I was like, man, get out nah, of here. Bro. See, AWA, like, AWA parking is free. AWA's parking is free. Like, if you, unless you use their valet, if you park at the hotel, it's free. But fucking Momocon, the Omni Hotel or whatever, they can suck my dick because that shit pissed me off so bad. <laughs> All right. Uh, we are, yeah, definitely coming towards the end here. We, we're pushing an hour. You gave me a good hour. So I do <laughs> I <try>. appreciate <laughs> it. Sorry, I'm having mic issues. My mic wants to fall off right now. I'm just going to uh, hold nope. it. Um. <laughs> So, what's the next tournament you're going to? Where where can we catch you at? Um, more than likely Gwinnett Brawl. Gwinnett Brawl on the I think the next one is let's see, it is on the 16th. The next Gwinnett Brawl is on the 16th. I will be on commentary for Pokémon because that is actually the last uh Wii U tournament for Pokémon that Gwinnett Brawl will be holding. Oh, so I didn't even I'll know definitely it was still be... going on. I didn't know they still had Pokémon there. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Um, it's usually anywhere from I want to say maybe um anywhere from somewhere between twelve and twenty entrants usually. Okay. There are people like one dude, like one or some dudes come from Alabama, some dudes come from Tennessee, uh, some dudes come from Florida. Like, yeah. Okay. So it's it's definitely pretty solid. I mean, we're not one of the bigger tournaments there, but it's still got a solid amount of people that come. So that will be the last. Uh, Pokin Wii U tournament that Gwinnett Brawl hosts, so I've definitely got to make sure to be there for that for commentary, um, and then I'll also be playing playing in Tekken there. So okay, and for any viewers or listeners, I'll also be there. I won't be entering Pokin or whatever, but I'm gonna be there that same day. I'm not even sure. <laughs> if I'm I'm not sure if I'm even gonna enter like Street Fighter Five or Tekken or whatever. I I just want to be there. I haven't been to a community event. A real community event in a few months now, so yeah, I definitely, I'm definitely gonna try to make it out of that one. I wanted to go um to Red Bull yesterday, but I had a funeral to attend. So, oh, matter of fact, even without the funeral, I was gonna have to go out of town to a wedding. So either way, my weekend was not gonna be fighting game related. But this next weekend that I'm off, which is the 16th, I don't mm -hmm. think there's anything planned. I'm definitely gonna try to make it. So, 
I know I'll see you there, Silver, if I get there. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So I'll be on commentary and I'll be playing, playing Tekken. So. All right. You want to give any shout outs? I got any stream links or social media stuff you want to? Um. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Um. You guys, if anybody wants to follow me, um, you can follow me on Twitter at Silver Superstar. S U P A S T A R. Um. Uh. I stream sometimes. I haven't streamed in a while, but. Occasionally, I'll stream at uh, twitch.tv slash silverx2624. Um, Shout-outs to, uh, I guess, the Pokemon community. Uh, Shout-outs to <laughs> Murph himself for the hood come up and just always be the awesome streamer. You're, you're great, dude. Um, Thanks. And just uh, shout-out to any of the homies out there. I mean, y'all suck, but y'all cool, though. <laughs> 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 all right that'll so, do it for us uh I, I think we're done thanks silver not a problem man peace homies be tough yeah